Hi. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm excited to welcome everyone to Community Board Aid's first annual Youth Resource and Networking Summit. Uh, I'm Laura Spalter, Chair of the Board. Um, I want to thank the organizations who are presenting tonight and all our participants and the Youth Committee for organizing this opportunity. Uh, it's important, uh, collaboration and sharing resources is key to serving our youth. So I'm looking forward to learning more about all the uh, great opportunities that we have to our organizations and community board aid tonight. So with that said, uh, no further ado, Julia, take it away. Um, yes, I wanna echo those sentiments. Thank you all for joining us tonight. This has been a year and a half, maybe a two year project to get to this point. Um, you know, we had hoped a couple of times that COVID would cut us a break and we'd be all able to meet in person and actually exchange, you know, business cards like we used to, but um, we've persisted nonetheless. Um, I just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, we do have a very full agenda. I'm asking that people try to keep their presentations to about five minutes so that we can allow some time for questioning for questions and um give everyone a chance to speak. I don't, you know, want people to have to jump off because the hour gets too late and then miss something. Um, if you have any like individual, you know, very specific questions, we are more than happy to connect you after the fact. And we are more than happy if uh, any of the present presenters have um, any flyers or handouts, we're more than glad to distribute those to everyone or anyone who asks. Um, I will stop talking now in the interest of time and we can move forward with the agenda. Is someone from the council member, is a council member here or someone from their office? Julia, it's Kira. They don't seem to be on yet. Um, she, she's running a little bit late. So if you want to uh, get onto the presentations, I do see that police officer James is here from the NYPD. And uh, just so everyone knows, if you are presenting, I have made you co-host. If you have something to share on your screen, you're more than welcome to do so. That sounds reasonable to me, Officer James. Would you like to take it away for us? Yes, good evening, everybody. Nice meeting you guys. All right, um, so for, for y'all that don't know me, I am Officer James uh, from the 5 Precinct. Uh, let's start off on a personal side. I am I'm married and have two kids. Um, they're very both young. Uh, one is turning uh, one and three. Um, I have a daughter, she's one, and my son is three. They're both turning um, that age in um, April. They, have, they, they share the same week in April. So I'm excited. So pray for me. Um, uh, I'm a military brat. I was born in Germany. You know, and my hobbies are, um, you know, I like going to church. I like spending time with my family. I like playing basketball and I enjoy serving the community. Um, on the personal side, oh, excuse me, on the professional side, I've been a New York City police officer for 10 years. Uh, um, I did two years in um, Spanish Harlem and um, eight years here in, um, in Riverdale. Um, uh, I um, did patrol, I was a um, FTO, I was a field training officer. Um, I trained um, the rookies coming in and my current position is a youth coordinator um, officer. Um, they call it YCOs. And um, pretty much our duties is, you know, we visit schools, we confer with principals um, and we give these kids like resources um, um, we also collaborate with, um, you know, probation, uh, corporation council, and ACS. Um, I'm also the um, Explorer Post Advisor for Post 2050. I was looking at the um, the flyer said presentation for the the Five O Explorers, but we hold our meetings every Wednesday and Thursday, so I was a little confused. Nobody told me um, I would have had my post here, and they could have definitely gave you guys um, a presentation so we could coordinate something better in the future. And I have them um, perform like some sort of drills for you guys, if you haven't seen that. Um, so I've been a post advisor for two years and um, in the Explore program is pretty much um, 
a law enforcement uh, uh, based program where these kids come in every uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Other posts, other precinct, you know, hold um, weekly meetings, but these kids love the program so much. So I, I hold meeting uh, twice a, um, uh, a week and it's from um, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And um, in this program, we do drills, um, we do uh, scenarios, car stops, domestic violence scenarios, bomb threats, hostage negotiation, officer takedowns. Um, and these kids, they learn how to, um, you know, place handcuffs on people. And we just go over uh, basic penal laws and procedure of um, the NYPD um, uh, department. Um, my partner's not here, Officer Rodriguez. He is the, uh, the YLC coordinator and that's the Youth Leadership Council. So that, that, pre that program is not so, I wanna say strict, but it is, it's a bit more lenient because it's not uniform based. Our kids, we have three uniforms, uh, class C's, which is cargo pants, boots, and a jacket, uh, class B is a bit more uh, more strict, and class A's is full full competition mode where they wear their ties, collar brass, white gloves, hat, and um, and recently we had a competition. Actually, oh my goodness, right here, a competition right here this past Saturday, and we uh, came in third place in um, color guards, and this is for the whole department, including Nassau County. So we, we place as um, 5044 PSA sub. We were the only um, precinct in the Bronx that place. So these kids, they work hard, um, you know, and um, I'm so proud of them. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, I'm here. Uh, I will leave my email and my contact number in the chat. And I'm um, definitely nice meeting you guys. Officer James, we don't have a chat, but I will be more than glad to uh, share it along with an aftercare email or an after summit email sharing resources. And I was going to say, if you guys don't recognize me, you may see my face on probably like ESPN, Good Morning America, News 12. I, I, I've been on the news a lot, you know, you know, good things, uh, probably shooting the basketball off the sidewalk into the into the court. So, so I had my fair share, you know. I love the kids. <laughs> okay. Any uh, questions? Yes. Chair Spalter, uh, you have I'm muted. Name? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm muted. Um, what were the ages and, and how do you recruit? So we we as opposed, we usually go to like Van Cortland Park or we will go to, you know, 225 and Broadway and we, we actively recruit. We actually just had a recruiting um, session in Van Cortland Park when it was like 60 degrees. Um, they can either come to the precinct, uh, hand over an application, or they could simply go on um, N, um, nyexploring. I believe it's .gov or .org, org, and they could apply online and they could submit post 2050 and I'll get the application and they, and they could, um, they can submit it by um, by then. So and is it, it middle school? Ways. Excuse me. Is it middle school, high school? From from ages fourteen to twenty. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. Fourteen to twenty. Uh, I imagine many uh, participants move on to uh, careers in in the legal profession. Do you find? Have you found that? Because it really sounds uh, fantastic. Yes, it's a great program, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it. We have a, 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 a great group of kids. Um, we actually had a recent explorer. She's actually in the army right now, um, and she um, aspires to be a, a pilot. So I'm proud of her. Um, we have a, a cadet. He was actually well, I said cadet. He was explorer. He's now a cadet at the NYPD. Um, uh, he was explorer of the year last year, um, and he he won a lot of medals. Um, and a lot of kids. It, it, I say it's law enforcement based, but a lot of kids. Um, strive and do other things, whether, you know, in the medical field, you know, law enforcement, some, you know, want to be lawyers. It's just a, a good program, you know, if they want to instill discipline and, you know, just good morals and values in life. So they, they go on and do and do great things. I'm so proud. The future is definitely in good hands. Thank you. Fantastic. No uh, Tabitha, you have a question? Yes. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, 
So where do the drills and everything take place? Is it at the precinct or you have so, another yeah, center? Yeah, so we, we, we conduct our meetings here in the muster room in the, in the 5 precinct um, uh, uh, every uh, Wednesday and Thursday from 5, uh, give or take 7, 7.30. Sometimes, you know, you get carried away. So we get lost track of time and it, sometimes it extends. But every Wednesday and Thursday, so pretty much after school, the kids, they come. Right now we have about 30 kids in the program. And hopefully we can get more. Yeah, so we so we practice, so we practice here in the precinct, then we compete. So this was this was actually the um the first annual drill competition. Um this was held um, right here, uh right behind the four seven on Bronxwood. We have another competition coming up in May at uh Camp uh Pouch. That's in um Staten Island. So that's May 5th. Um, so that's it. Then um May 20th, we have the law enforcement recognition dinner. Um, I just nominated one of my explorers for Explorer of the Year. Um, she should get it. So, so she, she's good. She's good. She's been in the program for about four years. She's committed. She's dedicated. She's motivated. So she definitely should. She should get it. So, that's Julia, I have one last question. I'm sorry, I forgot. Mm -hmm. how, how is your program funded? Oh my goodness. Um, we honestly, man, we 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 fundraise. We we, we want to know if you need more money. <laughs> Man, no, no, no. We definitely, we definitely need more money, man. Cause you know what? How you say that? Because um, it's not not only me, but um, us post advisors, we do have this issue, right? Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I come out of my pocket um, week in, week out. You know, um, it's for the greater good. Whether these kids are hungry, man, they're coming after school. Now they're competing and they're doing drills and scenarios. So what? I give them pizza, you know, I give them beverages and. You know, and it adds up and, you know, we go on bowling trips. We go to, um, you know, we we did a rock climbing in the city. Uh, you know, they, they ask their parents, to, you know, for money and whatever money we have left over, we try to, um, you know, meet them there. But um, we also do like, you know, try to do like this, this uh, summer, we speak about car washing, uh, bake sales, um, lemonade stands. So we do our fundraising by stuff like that. But yeah, that, that's like an issue. Uh, we have um, um, back in the days, the, the all precinct had like a um, a nice card where the CEO would give it to you, and but they they cut that off. So right now, we're pretty much a nickel and diming on on our own. That's depressing. Yeah, it is. Thank it you is. for sharing that. Thank you, Officer no James. Problem. We'll see if we can make this a budget priority. We'll discuss it in our April meeting. Um, you're welcome to join us if you can. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you so much. We will share your information. And if you want to send us a flyer or something to share around, we'd be more than glad to do that as well. well um, is, I know some people have their organization in their name. Uh, is there someone from the Friends of Spite and Dival here? Okay, we'll circle back. Um, Animal care and control. I recognize most names on the participant list, so I don't think so, but I will ask. Okay. Port independence. Am I able to share screen? Uh, uh, yes, I, yes I, I need you co host. All righty. Let's see. Give me one second. All righty. Good evening, everybody, and happy Monday. My name is Lana Ray, and I'm the program director for Fort Independence Community Center. So we're located at 3350 Bailey Avenue, and we are a cornerstone program. So Cornerstone Program is basically a program that offers different programming within the program and services for all in our community. Of course, we give priority to NYCHA residents, about 51% of our registration and enrollment. Um, the requirement is that they be our NYCHA residents. And the ages we serve are five and up, and it is on a first come first serve basis. Okay. So that's just a sample of our after school program flyer. So the requirements um, in order for us to register and process you for our program are that you fill out and complete an application. 
If your child is registering and enrolling for after school or summer camp, um, it's required that they have a current and up-to-date medical. And then all applicants are required to have a photo identification, but we assist with taking IDs as needed, okay? Our after school and summer camp is open to K through fifth. And then we also have evening and weekend programs. So the way evening program works is we're open to sixth grade and up. That includes all the way up to senior citizens. And then weekends were open to all, so kindergarten and up, again, all the way up to senior citizens as well. So a little bit about our programming, our programming timeline, the way summer camp works with our Cornerstone program, we operate July through August each year. Our after school runs September through June each year. And then weekend and evenings runs year long. Um, so that would be July through it will begin in July and through the school year to the next June. And then there's a little asterisk there because the hours of operation in the summertime, they get extended for our weekend and evening programs. So normally on the weekends, we're just open Saturdays. In the summers, we're open Saturdays and Sundays. And then normally our evening and weekend programs, um, well, our evening programs will run until 10 p.m. during weekdays. And in the summer, that gets extended until 11 p.m. And then that Saturday, we're usually open. We're usually open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. during the school year. But in the summers, again, it changes a little bit. We're open Saturday and Sunday from 3 to 11 p.m., okay? So regular hours of operation. After school operates from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Evening program operates from 6.30 until 10 p.m. And then weekends, we're open Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Give me one second. And that's just a picture of one of our youth in our cooking program on Saturdays. He's learning how to make a spicy Korean um, chicken dish, which is pretty cool. Activities that we offer in our program, cooking, leadership, homework help, sports, drama, art, STEM, youth council, ESL, Zumba, family game nights, and of course, much, much more is coming. Okay, so outside of our after school summer camp evening and weekend program, we also offer our community a wide variety of community events. So some examples of past events, we had breakfast with, with Santa, where parents were allowed to come into the center, enjoy a waffle and chicken bar with their youth, and of course, Santa Claus. Um, we had a mobile COVID testing site at our site. We serve as a poll site throughout the years. Um, we had a PPE and COVID kit giveaway at our site as an event. And then more recently, we're wrapping up a fresh produce food drive for our community. Um, as far as resources, <laughs> in addition to programming and the events that we host for our community, we also provide resources as they become available and are made known to us. So anytime we receive information about scholarships, any type of competition opportunities that will allow our youth to gain monies um, to advance their education and so on. We share with families and our youth as they arrive to us. Um, we also share any uh, job opportunities we learn of that might be able to, again, assist our youth with acquiring maybe their first internship, um, their first job, and then that also goes to family members as well. And then any programs or services we don't provide at our Cornerstone program, we also take down information of our community members and we make referrals as needed, meaning if we can connect them with any other organizations that we know of in the community or any additional resources, we will. Uh, okay, so that's about it. And you can contact us, oops, excuse me, for more info. Uh, you can reach us at 718-710-8449, or you can email myself at lray at mmcc.org. And that was about it. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? I mean, I know it was a wonderful presentation, but absolutely no questions at all. Oh, Stephen, please. Yeah, um, so in regards to your hours of operation, um, are those year round or are those only when school is in session? Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. So 
your hours of operation, like I see you have your after school program from two to six, um, evening 6.30 to 10 p.m. and your weekends from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Are those hours year round or only when school is in session? So when school is in session, the after school program is 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. and then evenings are 6.30 to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then weekends are only Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then when summer camp starts, we extend our evening and weekend programs. So weekend opens up to Saturday and Sundays. So we're 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then evenings will be 6.30 until 11 p.m. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. Any other questions? Again, if you think of something later, I am notorious for that. I think of something as soon as the meeting's over, email the office, we'll help everyone get in touch and share contact information and everything else. Um, I want to circle back to the top of the agenda. I believe Council Member Sanchez has joined us. Would you uh, like to make a few remarks? Hi, yes. Um, no, I just wanted to, to say hello to everyone and to, to thank Community Board 8 for putting together this summit. It's really important, um, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be great information that uh, is gleaned from this. Um, hello to, to the 50th Precinct, uh, Officer James. Good to see you, um, and, and good to see everyone. So, you know, my, my inauguration was yesterday, and it actually, we did it at Bronx Community College, which uh, is where I attended um, the Upward Bound program when I was 13 years old. Um, and so it's kind of a, a full circle moment for me. And so those resources that you provide, those after school programs, that work that you do. Oh, hey, Tabitha, I didn't, I didn't see you right away. Good to see you. Uh, that, that those resources that you provide and, and that, that work that you all do uh, for our youth is, is really important. So I'm not, I'm not sure if, uh, if there's like young people from the community uh, on the call right now, uh, but I just wanted to, to say hi and, and you know, express my support for this and uh, you know, offer to be a resources. We will be in, in our office uh, um, offering uh, some internships. So we're working through the SYEP program. Um, if, there, if folks you know, apply and you wanna be placed over here, uh, gonna be super, super welcome, especially if you live in District 14. Um, and we're also working with a, a few other avenues as well. So any, any interested students, I'll actually, oh, I was going to put it in the chat and then I see that there is no chat, uh, but Julia, CV8, you know, you know how to find us. Um, any, any interested students, young people uh, who are interested in government, want to get involved, whether it's with us or, or some other way, get in touch with us. You know, it's, it's all about um, building those bridges. So we're, we're at district 14 at council.nyc.gov. That's district 14 at council.nyc.gov. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the councilwoman? Okay. We will uh, resume, I believe. Uh, Kara, just keep me honest. I believe we're at Riverdale Neighborhood House. They're a representative from Riverdale Neighborhood House. All right. Uh, children's arts and science workshops. Am I reading this one? Right? Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, okay, I think that was all, unless I'm looking at a old agenda. Um, I'm but, here for Van Cortland yeah. Park Alliance. Yeah, we added the Portland Park Alliance a little bit later, Julia. <laughs> I'm sorry, I must be looking at an old agenda. I apologize. That's Please. fine. By all means. Okay, then I am going to share my screen. Okay, you guys can all see that? All right, good stuff. It's always nice when it works. Um, so my name is Sarah Kempton. I work with the Van Cortland Park Alliance for maybe 16 years at this point. Um, and our mission is basically to preserve, promote, and support the recreational, ecological, and historical aspects of Van Cortland Park. So 
we are a small staff of about six or so. Um, there's only really five of us out in the park doing programming and we do a lot. So this is a quick rundown of all of the types of programs that we um, that we run and which categories they fall into. And I'm really gonna focus today on, I think the community stewardship and the education, just because that's what the focus of today's meeting is. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that we do and everything can be found on our website, which I've written down on the last slide. And basically our community stewardship. So we run volunteer days right now going on Wednesday mornings, Friday mornings, and then every third Saturday of the month, we have um, different areas of the park scheduled to have volunteer days. So the Wednesdays and Fridays tend to focus more on adults because most high school students and young girl still in school at that point. Um, but the third Saturday of the month, we've definitely gotten a lot of high school students that come um, and a lot of maybe middle school students that come out with their parents even in the past. And we're focusing on different sections of the park. Um, the picture there is something from last summer working in the lake and pulling out some of the invasives in the lake. And that is something that we do during the summer. Um, get out there in the waders and remove the water chestnut, which is what Noel is doing there. We also run two high school internships. So both of our internships, um, the application for Urban Eco Teams is out right now. And the other internship, Garden to Market, will be coming out at the end of this month. Um, but the Urban Eco Teens program is in its 11th year right now. It tends to be a group of around 20 to 25 kids per summer. And just a quick outline of it, it's a seven week paid internship. Both of our internships are paid. Um, they get to earn three college credits from Manhattan College and that's tuition free credits for them. Last year, all of the students who took the class got those college credits. And that college class is also open to both internships during the summer. Um, and then basically they rotate through different environmental careers. So the focus really is to show them what green careers are out there, show them um, what different types of career paths there might be, especially coming mm -hmm. from urban areas. You don't realize how many different jobs there are in the environmental field. And that's really what um, Paulina focuses on running this program, getting the kids out there and experiencing all these different aspects of working out in nature. Um, they're doing workshops, they're doing trips to other parks and areas so that they can see what's out there. And they're really working very closely with professionals out here in the park. The garden to market internship is the one that I run. That one focuses out of our garden. Um, normally we also hold back to the stewardship. We normally hold volunteer days in our garden. This year we are rebuilding it. So we're not having any community programming in that progress, in that process while we're rebuilding. Um, but we are still holding our internships. So the garden to market internship, just like the um, Urban Eco Teens is seven to eight weeks during the summer. The kids work about 15 hours a week um, and they're spending a day in the garden learning about composting and growing vegetables and leading volunteers and all of that. They're running the farm stand, which is located in amalgamated housing on Orloff and Gale Place every Wednesday. And they're running the market. I'm there really just to show them how to do everything that first week or second week. And then they're kind of running everything. They're looking at the produce lists and telling me what to order, figuring out the prices with me. They'll decide what they wanna to do to promote the market. They'll decide if there's any special programming at the market. We hold cooking demonstrations. So that's usually me with one of them each week doing a cooking demonstration. So they're really learning small business skills. They're learning how to carry on a conversation with a stranger and with a stranger who they probably wouldn't have interacted with normally. Um, one of the nicest things about working with youth is that even if they end up 
not leaving and going into the environmental field. I've had interns come back to me after doing this internship and say, I never realized I liked talking with like older adults. And that's not something they ever would have done. Your average teenager doesn't randomly talk to seniors. And they were able to at the market. They were able to interact with people in the neighborhood and really build that skill. Um, and then the next, the third day in the internship, they're focusing on education. And that education is very broad. It's learning cooking skills. It's learning information about our vegetables. It's learning what sustainable versus organic might mean. It's learning about the insects in our garden, if that's what they're interested in. So it really, it really gets to be something that by halfway through the program, because there's only four interns in this program, halfway through the program, I'm able to pick out what they really are interested in and kind of tailor the last half for them to focus on what they want to do. And that's just a few pictures of the market. So that's one of our cooking demonstrations um, in one corner. I had one year that the kids wanted to learn how to pickle vegetables. And so we made pickled beets and pickled um, um, Brussels sprouts with them. And then I had one year that the kids really, really liked looking at all the insects and everything in the garden. So we put out some traps and they got to identify some of the stuff that was in the garden, which was really interesting. And then we also have education programs. So this basically focuses more on school age children. Um, it'll go all the way from pre-K up through high school. We are doing programs in person. Um, we made all of the adjustments through COVID and it looks like schools are able to now take trips for a while. The school buses were canceled for the spring, but I've been told the school buses are back on right now. So we run hikes, we run programs in the lake. Um, we run just nature awareness, which is really just getting out into nature and using your senses to see what's going on. Um, and then right before COVID, we had actually developed a couple of high school labs. So we've got two labs that have um, an in-class portion and then the out in the field section that they do with us. Um, we've also started during COVID family hikes for small children and their parents or caregivers. And that really focuses on combining art, reading a book, doing a project and a small hike and really just getting out into the park. These are a picture of some of our programs. Um, and so what's pictured is a few of our garden programs. Once our garden is rebuilt, I'm hoping by next spring, we'll have the full slew of garden programs up and running again. And once again, that goes from pre-K all the way up through high school internships in the garden. We do on Wednesdays um, have a very small window of time where I do school trips at the market. Our market opens at like two o'clock so I can really only do school programs most of the time with the schools that are right next to us. So like Ampark or maybe PS95 um, is the closest schools to us. But if there's an after school program, we're open till seven. So if there's an after school program that wants to come and do a program with us, having the kids come to the market is always a lot of fun because we talk about all of the vegetables, there's always something there that they've never seen or didn't know came in that color or size or shape. Um, and then when I have health bucks, which are $2 vouchers um, that we get from the, from the state and everything, when I've got health bucks, I'm able to give everyone who comes on the trip a health buck. So the kids actually get to go shopping at the stand which is really, really fun and allows them to pick what they want to eat. And they learn that carrying a bag of groceries back to their school is difficult. And it's really fun watching them be able to make those decisions on their own. So if there's a school or an after school program that would like to come and do a trip at the market, the market runs from July through the end of October. And I definitely love having groups come there. Um, and then I think this is the last slide. So. Everything we do can just be found on our general vancortland.org website. Um, but then specifically, if you're doing education programs, um, 
it's through explorable places. And for the stewardship events, you can go straight to the calendar of events. And for the internships, you can go straight to that internship page. Um, but really everything, all three of those other links come off of our general Van Cortland Park, um, vancortland.org page. And that is it. So I'm gonna stop sharing Thank and you stop so talking. Much. <laughs> and if you guys have questions, I'll answer them. You can raise your virtual hand or your, if you have your camera on your actual hand, whichever makes you comfortable. I think yes, Laura's kind of hand there. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I have been very impressed. I have visited that farm stand and yep. been very impressed with um, the the, the kids and their uh, interaction. And uh, it's just teaching such amazing social skills along with math and everything else. And uh, Protus was excellent. I just wanna say I've, I've been to that and uh, that is great. Was that also with uh, Grow NYC? Was that? Yeah, so we, we source our produce primarily mm -hmm. from Grow NYC. We usually bring whatever we're growing at the garden also, but we source primarily from Grow NYC. Um, and then everything that's not sold, we, I always that first week end up surprising my interns and letting them know at the end of the day when we pack up everything that's left over and get back to the office. I surprise them with like a reusable shopping bag and let them know that they're able to take whatever they want home. So it's really cool because I get kids who literally by the end of the season are bringing laundry bags and bringing home like <laughs> food for their entire building. And then I always get one or two interns who are like, no, my mom only wants two potatoes. I'm like, no mother only wants two potatoes. Take them. Take them. Um, so it's a lot of fun, but whatever is left over after the interns get first dibs, we actually donate to the friendly fridge down on Broadway. So it's been That's really excellent. nice. We've been able over the course of the season to donate like hundreds of pounds of the unsold produce, which is really nice. And that was something that my interns thought of um, last summer when the fridges first started coming into existence. Beautiful, beautiful, keep it up. Uh, Tabitha, you have your hand up? Um, yeah, so if we wanted to take a trip, I run the after school program, I'm sorry. Um, if yeah. we wanted to take a trip like during the summer or or any time. Is there a fee for it or? So there's a $50 fee for trips. Um, and then with the market, you almost kind of get that fee back because I'm going to give the kids a $2 voucher to go shopping. Um, so it's a very small fee and definitely you can email me. My email is just sarah at vancortland.org and you can definitely email me and we can try and schedule something. I like doing trips at the market. It's a lot of kids and I think it drives my coworkers crazy, but I really enjoy it. Any other questions at this time? Well, thank you, Sarah, I greatly appreciate it. Um, You're I believe, welcome. I believe Friends of Spite and Dive has joined us. Anyone from Friends of Spite and Dival on the line or the Zoom or? I see, I see Jody. I see her name. Maybe she's muted. How much? I see. Oh, technology. Yeah, no, so I see. Like here and. Uh, all right. Um, while we see, if, is there I'm anyone touch else? Jody and just see what's going on. Yeah, while we try to get the, the technical, is there anyone else in the meeting who was supposed to present that I have missed? Since we have some time, is there anyone else who wanted to present that now that you're thinking about it, you're like, oh, I should tell everybody about this? And it happens happens to me every day. I'm like, oh, I should have mentioned. Well, sure, I can go if you don't mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> Please. Uh, I'm, my name is Tapta Gazden. I um, work for Mashalu Matsuri Community Center, um, like Lana Ray does. 
I am, however, a beacon program. So I'm a little different than hers, very little different. Um, I'm just based in the school. I'm at PS86 here on Kingsbridge, right across the street from the big armory on Kingsbridge Road. That's my school. Um, I provide the after school program Monday through Friday, two to six. I also have Saturday programs, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We do have after school, we do have sports, we have martial arts, we have basketball, we have a lot of things going on in the school. Um, we will also be having our summer camp as we always do in the summer, which will run from July 5th through August 19th or 18th. Um, so that'll also be here. All of our programs are free of charge. Um, and yeah, I've been here for a very long time. <laughs> we also do community, uh, community events. Um, so we had our pantries. Uh, right now we're gearing up for an Easter egg hunt, a big Easter egg hunt in St. James Park in partnership with the Gardner Foundation. Um, so that's what we're paying up for now. We have our big uh, holiday giveaway every year in December. This year we gave away 350 something gifts to children from the community. Um, we gave away gifts, stockings, uh, cookies, teddy bears, we <laughs> they left with our arms full of stuff. So that was awesome to give away so many. Um, and uh, for our partners who donate was just awesome. We also do our turkey drive in partnership with them as well. Every year in St. James Park this year, I think we gave away about 400 and something turkeys this time. Um, so we try to, we do like really major events in partnership with other uh, uh, programs like the Gardner Foundation is one of them. Um, and yeah, so like I said, uh, we have programs for teens, adults, children, school age, just like everybody, family events, uh, things like that. So again, my name is Tabitha Gaston. I'm here at PS86 and we are a beacon program, which is on Kingsbridge Road next to the Armory. Nice. Any questions for Tabitha? Um, Julia, you. just so you know, I'm sorry, uh, Jody was going to oh. call in, so she should be coming back on through the phone to present because she can't unmute herself. Oh, okay. Um, while we wait for that, I just want to um, kind of explain next steps and my thoughts for what happens for our next summit. Um, I would love to maybe at the beginning, I know it's not a, like maybe in six months instead of a year, have an, a summit in person where people can have tables and cards and um, actually talk with, you know, bring, present your own organization, but also actually like, I'd love to meet people in person. It would be so refreshing. Additionally, what I would like to do, I really do encourage you guys to send the office all of your materials about all of your programs. My next plan, and I'm probably going to regret saying this out loud, is to create a resource guide for Community Board 8 of all the programs that we have and all the resources so that, Tabitha, if you're looking for something that Van Cortlandt Park has, you know to call them and you know Sarah, so it's not like, oh, I don't know what to do. You call Sarah, Sarah knows you, and it's a much easier transition and connection for your kids. You know, Lana, you call the 50th precinct and speak to Officer James about one of your kids who's really interested in the Explorers program, and it's not a cold call where you leave a message for someone that you're not sure ever gets it or knows who you are to return it. So. I want to do those two things hand in hand is have a guide, a resource guide. Other committees have done this. It's not, I'm not, not my original idea. This is no sense in reinventing the wheel. Um, but that's my thoughts. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, Julia, uh, that, that's actually a great idea. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. Um, another thing is, um, so Fort Independence Cornerstone Program, right? Um, you had stated you guys make referrals. Is she still, right? Yep. Lana Ray? Yes, I'm here. You, yep. So, I mean, one of the things that, you know, you, well, we could probably do is hopefully try to refer a little more people to the community board for them to have, you know, to experience what it is to 
attend the meeting and hopefully later on, you know, hopefully be board members themselves. That sounds good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That's an excellent point. Um, Jody, are, can you hear us now? Uh, yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, excellent. The floor, is, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I ended up having to call in on my phone. So um, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Kira, for trying to get me in. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jody Cologne with the Friends of Spite and Dival. Uh, we are a grassroots group. I am the co-founder. We started in 1995 cleaning up garbage and graffiti because basically we all hated moving <laughs> and um, grew into dealing with uh, what was going on in the parks and soon development and uh, have continue to grow and expand the kind of work we do. So we're basically a network of community activists, residents, and local organizations that collaborate with city agencies to educate people, ad teach them how to do advocacy, and then we create hands-on opportunities to get involved and make change to help us create cleaner, greener, and safer communities. So for our first half of our 15 years, we did five parks. Uh, there were no other stewardship groups in the community um, doing parks. So we did five parks. Then we branched out into cleaning the Metro North stations where Metro North would shut the railroad down on one side and cross us over. Um, our current council member actually participated in many of those things when he was in middle school and then continued to work in the business districts. We did cleanups and greenups, flower plantings. You can see some beautiful wrought iron tree guards and lamps in the Johnson Avenue business district. That would be because of all the work that we did with the merchants there. So for the next 10 years, we basically focused on teaching people how to do advocacy. So um, how to write a letter to your, to your elected official, how to write a letter to the city, how to write a three minute testimony. And we work with youth of all ages from three to 93. <laughs> and um, I've recently retired from the New York Botanical Garden from their community outreach and education program so I'm very excited to say that the Friends of Spite and Dival is back in the parks doing hands-on activities. And we we have focused on providing opportunities for youth to engage with nature in a way that they may not do in this community. Um, really getting your hands in the dirt, um, looking at what's in there, looking at the plants, looking at the insects, um, using an app called iNaturalist to ID them. And uh, we have created a collaboration between the other stewardship groups. So the stewards of Henry Hudson Park, the stewards of Bruss Park, and the stewards of Ewan Park are all registered with Partnership for Parks, like the Friends of Spite and Dival is. And we did our Leaf Crunch event um, all in the same weekend we went out and had families and um, neighbors and people traveling from Queens and Manhattan to come visit their friends and neighbors. And at Henry Hudson Park, we had over 66 people raking leaves and the four-year-olds were probably the hardest workers. Um, we have a group of uh, high school students who are earning their 30 community service hours for their schools and rather than them jumping from event to event to event, uh, I work with them to identify what they're interested in. And then they learn how to do the repetitive recurring task, which is pretty much rake more leaves from October till about now. And then it's pull more weeds from now until it's time to rake more leaves. Um, we've planted bulbs. We are teaching people how to prune, how to make compost. 
And once one of the students who are doing their community service hours shows that they're interested in wanting to be part of the group, um, I let them become a team leader and we work with them to train other students on how to do the tasks and how to become the team leader because it looks much nicer on a college application to say, I led a volunteer team than I volunteered. So um, Gage is doing his uh, Boy Scouts community service badge hours with us. Lanique is part of AmeriCorps. So she's done some hours with us to fill up um, with the requirements for her program. We've had many RKA students come. Um, Aiden came with two of his friends from different schools and he led a group this past weekend. So um, our next, our, our, our e-list promotes what's going on in those three parks. We're adding Spite and Dival Shorefront Park, which is the one with Half Moon Overlook on Palisade Avenue, as well as what is under the Henry Hudson Bridge in the Spite and Dival parking lot. And those are forever wild parks. So uh, we're encouraging people to take the stewardship training and to join us. In the past, we've worked with the NYPD Explorers. We've worked with MTA Explorers groups and all the training, all the tools are provided. And the more, the more people we can engage in looking at nature is, makes me happier. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, I saw Sarah on there. Um, leaf crunch was invented for Sarah because when I was working at the botanical garden, she said she recruited a group of students and it turned out that they were 66 young capoeira dance program youth. And of course they didn't fit in their garden. So we invented leaf crunch to help them learn how to compost. So um, I brought that back into Community Board 8, and we're looking to do Spring Spruce Up in May and Leaf Crunch again in November. But each of the parks has a regular volunteer schedule. Some meet on Sundays, some meet on Saturdays. And my newsletter, uh, spiteandivalny at gmail.com is my email. Uh, I send out about two or three days before an event just a reminder email with a list of all the upcoming events. And it's just a uh, cleaner, neater than, than sending you every week something. I uh, try not to crowd your inboxes. So if you'd like to be on the list and hear about all the different opportunities, just shoot me an email or the community board can connect you to us. We've also started leaf composting in Ewan Park and in Henry Hudson Park, we're working on helping Bruff Park um, compost their leaves as well. And hopefully I'll have some compost bins in Spite and Dival Shorefront Park soon. And we will loop in, I've been talking to Deb at uh, Jerome Park Friends and Neighbors to loop in that stewardship group. Uh, we'll go back to the business districts to do tree care. So we need lots of volunteers to help clean and green the community. And if you have groups that want to do uh, special events with us, we can try to accommodate that. As I said, I'm retired and I'm happy to be back outdoors working with the people in our community and especially the youth because they don't, they don't really have opportunities to get one-on-one -on -one attention and learn how to engage with nature and reflect upon how humans impact the natural world and how the built environment impacts the natural world. So if you were, if you saw us on the day where it was 17 degrees out, there were 29 people in the park, some four year olds, some 14 year olds and some 60 and 70 year olds, we were walking around touching all the plants that were frozen in place encased in ice and digging through the soil to see that it wasn't frozen um, once you got deeper down. So it's really a lot of hands-on exploration and just learning by doing. So um, I could talk forever about the parks. They 
look beautiful because of all the volunteers that have been helping maintain them and took training. But um, I'm happy to answer questions about the kinds of opportunities that we might have for any of um, your groups or, oh, did I lose you? Hello? We're here, we can hear you. Okay, I just had a, I, ju I just had a reconnecting thing, I'm sorry. Um, so, so do we, do we, does anyone have questions for me? I, I can't see your hand. So Julie, I'll have to rely on you. Not a problem. Glad to help. Is there any questions or thoughts? Again, if something occurs to you later, we are more than happy to connect everyone with everyone else. Um, uh, yes, uh, Sheriff Spalter, and then I, I just I just want to say that uh, uh, when we have uh, it's on Parks Day with the Parks Committee, uh, Jody's always invaluable, and uh, you know helps just get the job done, and she's a fabulous resource. And I'm glad that you're on tonight. And I hope you get more volunteers. Thank you, Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Laura. Uh, Leona? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so this is Jody. This is a general question for you and also for everyone else, specifically everyone from the parks. Because I, I live in Riverdale. I'm, I actually live across the street from Henry Hudson. And it's really, and I'm, I'm in Van Cortland like every week because the Bronx Science cross country team runs there. But it's just really amazing to me that um, I feel like there's not a lot of advertising going on. Like I had no idea that these sorts of things exist. Actually, I knew about some of Van Cortland Park Alliance's programs because of like my own research into teen programs. But um, just out of curiosity, do you guys advertise anywhere? Do you guys publicize this outside of your website and social medias? So um, Leona, that is part of what I started to do in my uh, retirement is to help create an e-list where we can email people. Um, some of the groups do have Facebook pages, Stewards of Henry Hudson Park does. Um, we have to get permission to post flyers on the park. So I've recently obtained the Partnership for Parks logo, which an authorization to use it and make flyers. But um, one, of the, one of the strange things about the local park groups is that they're so busy doing the work and the work is pretty overwhelming. Um, in trying to support the parks department and add some additional value that they don't really have the, they don't really take the time to manage web pages or manage social media accounts or do emails. And that's why the Friends of Spite and Dival has sort of stepped up to provide that kind of support. So I'll be tabling at the Riverdale Y Farmers Market on April, I think it's the 24th to promote the city nature challenge that we'll be doing across all these parks and we'll have some flyers and we'll do a media campaign. And I've already started to enlist some uh, students who need community service hours to help with that um, social media campaign. So um, that's a long answer to your question. I hope it helped. Thank you, Joe. Um, Speaking of social media, uh, uh, Five O Explorers, we do have a uh, social media. It's, it's, uh, it's on Instagram. It's Five O. Um, it's NYPD Five O Explorers. So NYPD, the number five zero Explorers. So you can find us on Instagram. And uh, thank you, Officer James. Uh, Sarah, was there anything you wanted to add on behalf of? I yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to echo a lot of what Jody said, but. It's a lot of on our website, uh, through our social media. Um, years ago, we would put out ads in like the Riverdale Fest or something when I first started working, but a lot of our programs end up being word of mouth right now, especially our internships. Um, like I said, I get four interns and my coworker gets about 20 to 25 
we'll have well over 150 applicants for those spots. There was a year that I had 120 applicants for four intern spots. So even just without huge amounts, we somehow get a lot of um a lot of people interested in our programs, but it's why we look for things like this where we can kind of reach a different audience. If you're not already on my social media, you don't know what's going on. So we like to reach out to different groups like this um, so that we're able to kind of reach a different audience and then get our foot in the door there. So yeah, passing along our information to all of the groups here definitely widens that reach. I'm just going to say this out loud in hopes that I remember this in our next meeting and that we should probably include social media handles on the resource guide when we get to that point. Um, so that it's part of the resources we offer the community. Um, so I appreciate everyone being really concerned with my title as the fastest meeting holder, but I also want to know if there are any questions or anything I neglected or anything I said I was going to circle back on that I haven't. Um, since we have the time, I want to make sure everyone is heard and um, everyone is feeling a little connected when we leave here this evening. Uh, Julie, Any? is it yes? Is it possible for our events to be included in the community board's bullet uh, monthly bulletin? Um, you know. Because we have to register with the parks department, we do submit our volunteer days um, pretty far in advance. So if I sent you some dates for April, is that something that the community board could do to, to help promote it to um, their, their list with the monthly mailer? Absolutely, uh, Jody. It's Kira. Just send it over to me and I'll include it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we had Thank speak up. Yeah, we advertise speak up in certain big community, you know, events. So that would be excellent. Great, thank you. Any other general questions, comments, words of wisdom? Yes, uh, Pastor Dean. Before I forget, we um we're going to be holding a cop versus kids um, basketball game at Intech Academy. That's going to be May 12th at 2 p.m. It's going to be a packed house. So if you guys can make it, um, I would love to see you guys there. So that's going to be May 10th, excuse me, uh, May 12th um, at 2 p.m. So if you guys could, um, you know, save that date, we would like to see you guys there. Hopefully we don't lose the cops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And again, if there's a flyer or something that you'd like us to share, please don't hesitate to send it over to us. We'd be happy to do so. Leona? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, I think I'm the only high schooler or student here. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for doing what you do. I appreciate it. My high school appreciates it. I go to Bronx Science. Um, I'm sure all the public and private school students all really appreciate the fact that these sorts of programs exist for us and for other people in our communities. And I'm, I'll send the Bronx Science varsity basketball team your way. <laughs> All Thank right. you. We, we've had the Bronx Science Key Club um, participate with us. It's what tonight's all about, right? Connections, making sure we, we know. And again, you know, the community board really wants to be a hub for all of you and make sure that, you know, if you have a student, a youth, a friend who needs a service that you don't know where to go, let us know. We'll, we don't know. We'll try to help you find it. Um, you know, especially I think I'm very confident speaking for this committee. We want to be helpful. We want to, whatever you guys identify as a need, we want to try to make sure we're addressing. So um, as always, thank you all for your time and attention this evening. I really do appreciate it. For those of you who don't know, my first meeting a year and a half ago, it was just me. I couldn't even have a meeting. I was sitting there by myself. I think at the Hatton College, one of the rooms like, oh. And this makes me so happy to see so many people here and engaged and participating. So thank you very much. Just a quick note, our April meeting is also going to be, uh, this is not officially a meeting because it's a summit, 
So our April meeting, we're gonna have some catching up to do. Um, so, you know, uh, come prepared to lively debate and discussion, especially in finaling, finalizing our budget requests. Um, I see that David's on the line. We have not forgotten. <laughs> um, we wanna make sure that we get that list hammered out and finalized so that uh, we can send it off and that our requests are really representative of what everybody here feels that they need. Um, as always, I will hang around in case anyone has anything they wanna just talk to me about that isn't maybe for the whole group, but thank you again for your time and the wonderful thoughtful presentations. And I look forward to seeing you all again at the April meeting, if not sooner. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julie. No, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us and overcoming the technical difficulties. I appreciate your persistence. <laughs> I, I just sent Kira a link so you can watch a little video I had made, which I can't show on my phone, but um, so at least you can get a sense of some of the things we were doing. I would be happy to. All right, have a great night. You Good too. night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, so Julie, I guess I'll be emailing you uh, in regards to, you know, the budgeting, um, you know, for the Explore program. That's yeah, I think, um, I think we had talked about that and I think we had also, there had been some preliminary discussions about maybe, uh, um, I, I'm so bad with acronyms today, I apologize, English is hard, maybe a PAL program or something. So, okay. um, if, if I just think about what, you know, things that we can help you with that we can request and we're more than glad to, you know, we just make a request, but we're glad to make the requests in Absolutely. conjunction with you and supporting of you and the hard work you do. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll keep Thank in touch. You. Absolutely. All right, bye-bye. Right. Good, Good night. Good night.